today we have a treat for you. We've actually gone over to the village of Finchingfield, which is a very much a picture postcard village, and we're going to for a tour around the local church and hopefully into the village. It's very popular with tourists and especially bikers, so you may possibly hear the sound of the thunderous sound of motorcycles. There seems to be a lot here. And with me, of course, as with all of these expeditions into the unknown, <laughs> I always say the unknown because you never know what's going to happen, <laughs> is... Hello, Anya. <laughs> well, you... I'm And we've got Poppy with us to oh. today, a special guest. So God knows how she's going to behave. But anyway, we're going to have a wander over to the church and hopefully talk about the history. Yeah. What about Poppy? <laughs> yeah, she's happy. Right, let's go. We've been to the uh, the Three Tons pub who have kindly allowed us to park in their car park. And here's the old beast here. So we're actually at the top of the top end of the village, coming down towards the hill. And the church uh, is just a short distance in front of me. But what about this property here on the left? This uh, beautiful timber frame thatch roof home. I mean, look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Let's walk across the other side of the road. What a lovely house. No date on it. It's very difficult to date with plaster and or rendered in part of. And we've got the old mortings here which kind of speaks for itself really doesn't it? It's a lovely house isn't it? Yeah. And our target for today is just to the left here. It's the actual church here at Finching Field. Oh look at this house here look you were like this is the old smithy so obviously at some point here the smithy's business was run and that's where the smithy lived and this delightful little cottage chestnut villa it's called and you can see ahead of us the slope that runs down into the village but we're not we're not going to, we have an entrance here we could go to the church this way but I want to show you something a little bit more grander so what we're actually doing we're approaching the Guild Hall the Finchingfield Guild Hall it's a row of timber frame buildings these date from 1470 the church we're going to the oldest part is the tower and that dates to 1170. Nice little pub here on the on the side opposite the guild hall. Right before we actually go in, this was built in 1470 and was used partly as a home for the priest. It also had shops here and a school. Let's go through the official entrance. And here we are. Isn't this beautiful? Look at this. What a lovely old building. And it's even got a toilet, look. Accessible WC. And the doorway to the left. So we're walking through an archway under the Guild Hall. And the oldest part of this church, which is St. John the Baptist, is the tower, which dates to 1170. And today, the, the Guild Hall is, still has a library operating from here, and a museum, which is open Saturdays and Sundays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. What's so the time? Today, so what's the time now? It's, uh, 50, uh, it's huh? 145. 145. So it opens in yeah, we'll come back here. We we'll just double check that because, to be honest, every museum that we've approached so far have always been closed when they're supposed to be open. And the Guild Hall, as you can see here, was restored 2000 to 2014 and opened by the Right Honourable the Lord Peter J.P. Lord Lieutenant of Essex on the 11th of July 2014. 11th of July is also another famous date for a very famous human being. 
me. <laughs> That's my birthday. Anyway, look at this church tower, isn't it stupendous? And the archway here, the front, at the front of the church. Isn't this beautiful? I think they probably and principally used this to, to date the age of the church. And you can see at one point, they're still here, there were, uh, there's a face here and a face here carved in the stone, but of course with age and circumstance it's sadly worn away. What a beautiful churchyard. I've been told there's a Charles Dickens buried here <laughs> by one of you good folk on YouTube. If only I knew where his grave was. But uh, if we come across it, we will share it. Obviously not the writer Charles Dickens, but someone who shared the same name. But we'll look at some of the graves here. What about you, Poppy? Are you enjoying this? She was swimming for the, for the grass as she does always. Churchyards always fascinate me. In some ways, churchyards are almost architectural. I can imagine there's a pediment over here on top of this, which looks like it dates from the Regency period, but it's much later. No, it didn't have a statue or anything on top. It was just a pointed pediment. But yeah, some of the graves that are here, the rich people of the village at that time of history. And look at the church from over here. This definitely looks very Regency. Let's have a look at the side. Barely legible writing on there. It doesn't actually tell you anything. What a sad tragedy and the irony, of course, that whoever paid to have this as a monument to their existence expected this to be seen for centuries to come. And unfortunately, acid rain or whatever the elements have worn away the lettering and now it's just but a silent a silent monument really it doesn't speak for itself and it certainly doesn't speak for its owner but anyway we're looking around the side of the church because I know you like to look at the side of churches Oh dear, some very ancient gravestones here. Sadly, very badly worn away. But you can tell by the style of it, we're looking at 18th century. Yes, this one, 1767. This one's a little bit more sheltered here. So it's much clearer. This is to Samuel Legerton of this parish who died on the 15th of May 1808, age 64, also of Anne, his wife, who died November the 9th, 1808, aged 54 years. So she only lasted a few months after he passed. How sad and tragic, really. But at least they're together again, aren't they? There's a kind of eeriness, you know, when ivy, do you think, we're, we're yes. surrounded by graves covered in ivy, aren't yeah. we? And I've always said that um, we live very, uh, I would say, wild lives and we live life through ups and downs, so a tomb shouldn't be something that it's perfectly uh, kept. It's always nicer when it's... Organically when... retreats back to nature. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And look over here, beautiful Indian horse chestnut, a really beautiful tree. We have the white version, white flowering version, which are like small candelabras. They are like small candelabras. And the pink, yeah. and the pink flowering version, as you can see here. They actually remind me of a Christmas tree with those light candles on, the old style of candles. Yeah, they do actually, yeah. Tree. yeah. No? They're very attractive. Yeah, there she goes. Oh, she's off. 
Uh, can we have a roll over, Poppy? People at home want to see you. <laughs> That's it. Well done, Poppy. Thank you. Thank you, Poppy. Poppy did that by special arrangement with uh, Chris Holt and Poppy Productions. Oh, and she's off again. As you can see, it's this is not only covered in ivy, it's covered in bramble. So in a way, perhaps, all this ivy may actually be preserving who's buried beneath. And we see the same here. And again, we can see here, well, in this particular example, it's starting to separate, as is often the case with age. As plants grow, they tend to force the stones open. And then eventually the rain, the ingress of water destroys the stone and they fall apart. But anyway, enough of this. A lovely old yew tree, again covered I in what ivy. I'm trying to say, I'm trying to find my words because I do suffer a brain fog these days, is that we do not have organized, perfectly set in stone lives. No. And neither should our tombs be organized to perfection. They should have their wildness that life has as well. It's very philosophical. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> have you anything to add to that, Poppy? <laughs> But from rolling over, could you roll over again just to make your point? Yeah, yes, go. okay, Poppy. <laughs> Thank you, Poppy. That's good. Yeah. She agrees with mummy. Yeah, Poppy's made her point. Okay, look at the end of this church. Isn't this wonderful? But let's go inside. Let's explore what's inside. I can hear everybody crying. We sweep across the cemetery. It's pretty beautiful here, isn't it? It's beautiful, isn't it? You know, when people come to Finching Field, they always go to the pub and the green. It's got a huge village green, which you will see. It's got a duck pond. It's got a lovely old bridge over the pond. And it's even got a windmill. But very rarely, I feel, do people bother to come and visit the church. Now, this entrance here... Look at the face of some man and woman. Yep. And we go across to the man. Oh, he's definitely very woke, isn't he? Definitely. And in the glass, look at this spike here, look, to stop people climbing. Look, just stand back. And the doorway. As I shared with you, Ashwell in Hertfordshire, you can see the door is picked out with rusted holes where notices have been posted over the years. This one had quite a few. Now I wonder if this is open. Do we go inside the box? Or do we stand outside the box? Roll of drums. Or we can get in. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, it's lovely and cool in here, isn't it? Yeah. I'll take my hat off. The house of God, the gate of heaven. Written across his arch. Poppy's showing off again. What a lovely font here. With the immoral bearings of the local gentry. I suspect that this is probably 15th century rather than earlier. If we look up on the walls of the church and the stonework, can you see the staining? So obviously at certain points of its history, this church leaked rainwater. As you can see, but look at this as we wander down here towards the chancel. And look at this screen. I'll come back to that, honey. She always calls me when I'm about to show you something to come and look at something else. But we'll look at that, whatever it is, shortly. But look at this screen, isn't this beautiful? Hope that you can see it clearly in the light. This is absolutely wondrous. Real craftsmanship. Let's wander inside the chancel. Oh, there's a lovely smell in here, very perfumed smell. And we come towards the altar. There's a number of monuments here to to those that have long parted there's a piscina here as you can see 
This is sacred to the memory of Anne, wife of John Marriott Esquire, Finchinfield, and late of Sturston Hall in the county of Suffolk. Isn't this wonderful? Obviously the Marriotts were a powerful family here because there's quite a few monuments to the Marriott family. The um, screen at the back here is particularly ornate. The mosaics of uh, Rome reproduced here on this screen. Let's have a wander around. It's a lovely, uh, the church, by the way, has a lovely spiritual feeling. I have to say, this is Thomas Marriott, age 74, died in 1766. And of course, the, the monument actually bears testimony to that period. And again, you have a, some very attractive encaustic tiles, medieval tiles. I can imagine these were very, very expensive to buy. And we have a grey plate here. Again, Thomas Marriott, who died in 1766 age 74. John Marriott, brother of the above and vicar of this parish, who died October the 23rd, 1781, aged 88. And across here, if you can see this, we have a cresting with Dame Dorothy, the wife of St. John Marshall, or St. Yeah, St. John Marshall of Sculpins in this parish, Knight April the 26th, 1685, age 45. So he died at the age of 45 in 1685. And we have two side chapels. Anya is in one of them. Oh, and some lovely monuments here, isn't there? Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, come on, I'm going to show you this. The brasses are actually still in place. Look at that. Unfortunately, it's not easy to, to um, access, so I can only do it from this angle. I hope that you can see the definition in detail, but it's uh, particularly attractive. It has been attacked. It's, as you can see, it's lost um, some armorial bearings, shields that were put in here, obviously been stolen. There is an inscription here, which I will show you, but I can actually... Let's get this camera in view. Let's start from there. I can't read it from where I'm standing. I hope that you can. And we have a story, don't we? Mm. What's up with Poppy? <laughs> She's just happy. It's nice her only party piece is the fact that she can roll over. Okay, this is Elizabeth Berners, who was the daughter, let's see if I can put this in focus, of Simon Wiseman of Brantham in Suffolk. She married John Berners of Petchies in Finchingfield. She died on the 26th of January 1523, and a blank was left in the brass for a subsequent date of John's death to be entered, but this was not done. Okay, so this wasn't actually stolen, it just wasn't filled in. But the brasses that we can see are still very much here. I will read further. John remarried, his second wife surviving him, and in turn marrying 
William Benlows of Brent Hall in this parish. The top of the tomb is made of Purbeck marble. Elizabeth is depicted on the brass in pedimental headdress and heraldic ma mantle. John is wearing a tabard over his armour. Around the sides of the tomb are robed and hooded um, difficult to read in the light. Headsman. A headman is one who is paid to pray for the soul of a benefactor. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So you can see the detail much more clearly here, can't you? I mean, the craftsmanship on this is just amazingly good. And here as well. And we can get in there. And on this side too, which disappears into the distance. And then of course we have another altar. A huge set of organ pipes here. This is a very small chapel actually. And then we're back into the main body of the church. Now we're wandering across to the other chapel. And this beautiful lectern carved from, it appears to be mahogany. How beautiful is that? Real, real craftsmanship. Wow, isn't this beautiful? Okay, let's wander into the other side chapel. A lot more grey monuments here. Okay, the, this is in loving memory here of Colonel Sir Edward Archibald Ruggles Bryars, who was the first baronet of Spain's Hall, which is a country house nearby. I think it's lived in today, and correct me if I'm wrong by all means, but I think it's Jamie Oliver who bought the property, but the Ruggles Bryars lived here for many, many years. This uh, John Ruggles Bryce died in uh, 2007, age 98. Hmm. Isn't this beautiful? You can really appreciate the full flavour of this church. And it is a very big church for a small village. It certainly has a certain style about it. Look at this. So if you rise up from the floor, up towards the rafters. There's an area here, which is the bell tower, which is apparently closed. I was just gonna have a sneaky peek with my camera. Uh, we can see all the ropes for the bell ringers, which I have absolutely no intention of pulling, in case anybody wondered. I can imagine if I rang them I'd be in serious trouble. There's a plaque here to the glory of God and in loving memory of Matthew Vaughan and Eliza his wife. The chimes in this town are dedicated by their sons and daughters in 1902. And there we go. So this is our tour of the church. Unlike Ashwell, which we visited the other day, uh, there's no graffiti on the columns, but there's plenty of empty pediments, which are obviously removed of garniture and statutory by the uh, Protestant zealots. I never get my head around religious bigotry. I mean, I was raised as a Protestant, but I find what some of my ancestors did to be quite appalling.
Yeah, I saw that earlier. Yeah, 1766, and there's a there's a further uh, reference to him on the floor, I think. Isn't this a beautiful church? Yes, yeah, unexpectedly beautiful. Well, now what we're going to do. <laughs> the thing with England is that you see a church or a cemetery or a village, and you say, "Wow, this is really stunning. I haven't seen anything like it." But then you go and find something else. I know, and they're everywhere. Yeah. But we're going to actually drive down. We're going back to the car because the pub allowed us to mm. park our car there. And we're going to drive into the village. We're going to park up and then we're going to go for we are going for a wander. And if we get the opportunity, we're going to visit a windmill which uh, still exists in the village. It's beautiful, isn't it? And Poppy just cannot be asked. Can you, sweetheart? No. Okay, let's go. It's a hot day, and it's a hot day for Poppy, that's for sure. Oh, can you smell that? Is it just me? I know, it smells that? beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? It's the smell of incense. Oh, motorcycles, can you hear them? I feel some car to them. Okay, we'll come back to this. When leaving the church, please close the door. And look, I did take my hat off. And uh, I think the spirits of this church will lend us around to have a look. It's, a it's such a beautiful, church. it is such a beautiful building. How does this rate in your book of churches? The top. At the top? Yeah, the oh. top. Absolutely. It's got such a beautiful energy. The, the energy in here is really is good. Really yeah, good. it has a wonderful energy, definitely. Yes. Very, very pleasant, very friendly. Very, yes. Okay, let's go. Oh. Okay. You shut the door. Yeah. Can we check the museum? Yes, what's, on, what's the time now? Um. 10. Now, should we have a bet, two. folks? Everybody at home, keep your fingers crossed. Will the museum be open or will it be shut? Oh, can you hear those motorbikes? Oh, they just drive you to distraction. I have to say, I'm very pleasantly surprised because quite often we come we come to museums and the museums are always closed, <laughs> even when they're supposedly open. <laughs> Is it all right to film in there just to wander around? Yeah, what are you yeah. filming for? Oh, it's only to put on YouTube because yeah. we're just doing a, a walk around the village. You don't mind our little fella here? She's okay. <laughs> she tries to be. <laughs> <laughs> she tries to be, yeah. Oh, she'll be okay. Oh, what a beautiful yeah. building. Interactive display, so that man will talk to you. The portrait. Really? Really? Well, this chap here. Okay, how does he. Oh, I see. I am William Kemp. You are lucky I'm talking to you. Yes, we are. A few months ago, I hadn't said a word to anyone for seven years. You see, I've accused my wife of being unfaithful to me. Verily. There's lots of drawers to open. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, let's have a wander through. Oh, look at this jug here. Isn't this beautiful? Yes. And I think you were. Oh, that You can pull drawers. Oh, you can have a look at these. And this is a woodworker's. Mm -hmm. Which is old, of course. So, Porn stone. That's a porn. Yeah. This this building dates to 1470. Yeah, 1470. Yeah. And the tower dates to 1170 of the church. The fire station. Mm-hmm. Yeah, another interactive display here. Yeah. It's really nice. The Thatcher. The work of the Thatcher. Frank Gilby, the Thatcher. Yeah. 
craft, which fortunately is still very much in evidence, isn't it? Let's have a wander in here. Oh, look at the fireplace. I used to have something similar in the house that I lived in. Yeah, you can't get much more old English than that really, can you? Just a lovely room, isn't it? You can imagine how cold it would have been in here during the winter. Looks like an old Bible here. Family Bible. Hmm. The workhouse pants here. Let's put something in there. Let's put the fire seat. And place the panels here. Place the panels and they give you an interactive of what this actually represents. So if we put this like the jigsaw, isn't it? Put that there. That's really good, isn't it? So each of these panels represents uh, a history file. And we have one here. And here we are, it's about the workhouse again. Apparently it appeared, the workhouse appeared in the village in 1767. Writer Norman Lewis, 1908 to 2003. I think that's probably his typewriter and his crash helmet when he went driving. Okay. Oh yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. He had quite an interesting life, didn't he? He did. Yeah. <laughs> he certainly travelled. He did. Yeah. I wish I had the Bugatti that he had though. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy to tell us anything about the history of this building? Uh, it was built by the Holy Trinity the Guild, mm. um, so it was a place connected to the church. It um, would have been used for housing of a priest upstairs. That's why I gathered, yeah. And um, down here there would have been individual little workshops, training so, places. You can okay. see doors and This is why you've got all those separate doors there. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Oh, excellent. During the Reformation, the uh, um, the guilds, the religious guilds were abolished by uh, Edward the Sixth, mm -hmm. and so this became a community-owned property built bought by the Kemp family for fifty pounds, which was a considerable amount in those days, and then it was made over to to the uh, trustees of the guild hall. Uh, as a community open owned building. Um, it's been restored. Be very grateful to English Heritage and the National Lottery for funding um, in 2012 to 2014, who helped us um, restore the building and it's make it. It's a very important again. building, isn't it? Important building, but it was cheaply made. A lot of the beams and things in here are described as what you would find by the side of the road. Second hand, um, at best. And so the building has tipped you know, <laughs> down the hill, yeah. but it's all safe and lovely now and we want lots of people to come and visit it. Well, it's quite a grand entrance when you come through the Guildhall, through the, Guild through the arch exactly. archway into the church. It is. I'll ask you a question because everybody asks me these questions. Is, is the building haunted? Well, we have um, events here where people do try and track down ghosts. I've been here on my own, I've been up here in the lofts, I've never been disturbed You've never by experienced anything. anything. But we've got some witches' sticks there, if you might like to Oh, let's have a look at the witches' sticks, where oh, are yeah, we? In the box. Oh, in the box. Oh, look at this. And this would have been to ward off witches, yes? Oh, that's well, it found buried into the side or into a part of the building. As with animals, they used oh, to bury as well. Yes, Cats in nice. particular, for some reason. 
Oh, look at these bits. They're quite attractive, aren't they? A witch's stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was quite bristly actually, it has a nasty use. Oh, the label down here. Let's pick that out. Yep, anyone can read that. Wow, that's very interesting. So we have two witches' sticks. I know it almost looks like a witch's hat, doesn't it? But it isn't. Or which is cauldron. <laughs> I can imagine this place would be quite popular in Halloween, wouldn't you? Um, and is it, can we go upstairs or is that out of bounds? Oh, can we do that? Oh, excellent. We can go upstairs. So I'm making a video and putting it on YouTube so to encourage people to hopefully come here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just point out that one of our Residents, Dodie Smith, who won, wrote a... 101 yes, Dalmatians. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was going to mention that. And where is her house on the way out? Our street in Barrett. If you press, press the next page... I saw a photograph of it earlier today. And again. That's her one of her plays. Yeah. So for you fans of 101 Dalmatians, this is the authoress as they used to call them. She's with, with Dalmatian. With her Dalmatian. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? There we are. And there's the house. Paris. Yeah. Well, we'll definitely give that, we'll have a look at that on the way out. Thank you. It's and um, <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think a lot of people will find that intriguing, that the author of 101 Dalmatians lived in Finchingwood. <laughs> I mean, did she actually write it here, or did she...? Yeah. Yeah, She'd actually write it yeah. here. Yeah. Yes, another famous author is Norman Lewis. Yes, we saw it. Norman. Yeah, Norman Lewis earlier. Yeah. Norman Lewis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're now going upstairs. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you. Oh, isn't it lovely in the sun here, eh? Oh, the sunlight. And this is the upper floor of Finchingfield Guild Hall. Say that these stud work there. Look at this, isn't this beautiful? And it still has that, sm that smell of oak. You can still smell that old oak. This is really beautiful. Set out for a coffee morning, but we um, have on the wall paintings by um, a local resident called Arthur Leg. Uh, he died in 1942, painted at the end of the Victorian era, and uh, painted local people. Local oh, this people. is his work here, is it? This is all around the all world. Oh, all wow. Painting this painting here is absolutely beautiful. And, and this lady here, the detail, I hope you can see it better. These are, he was a very, very, very talented artist, and this is all of his, all of his work. Yeah. This is marvellous, isn't it? Do you use this? I see it's laid yeah. out with a table. Do you use this for yeah, this village or parish council meetings? Well, we use this. This is set out for a Monday coffee morning, um, but it gets used out for all sorts of events. That's marvellous, yeah. yes. Absolutely marvellous. craft sales, craft markets. And despite you saying how cheaply made it was, it's still here. It's still here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It hasn't I've gone had away. Some serious intervention a few times. Mm. But even so, it, there's so much uh, charm in this building, isn't there? I mean, I can see that it's had a number of replacement beams, but it still retains most of the original. I used to live in a timber frame house, and the problem for me was walking through doorways, and it's not too bad here, but I'm, I'm quite tall. And the doorways in the house that I lived in, the, the door frame was down here somewhere, so as soon as you walk through and someone spoke to you, you instinctively lift your head. And I used to whack my head so many times. And you've got a small door there that must lead into it's like a roof it's loft. A attic, yeah. yeah, wow. Isn't this beautiful, folks? 
And this, this artist, he was so talented. I should imagine today people must be very, very proud of his work here. Uh, you know, people who lived, lived here, yeah. raised their families here. Well, it also triggers memories for some, doesn't it? Yeah. And I can see you've got the Guildhall at Thatched. Yes, yes, we're both proud of that. <laughs> That's a lovely building as well. That's another cute yeah. building. And this is, um, as you remember, folks, we went to Thaxted the other day and we went into the basement of the Guildhall. And there she is with a church just behind. Wonderful. I really appreciate you allowing us in here. Um, there's various bits of little writing on the wall. Oh, I don't know what it says. There's another... Because this would have once been the school for boys mm -hmm. in the village. There's some writing there, but um, I don't know if you can see this. Especially over there, there's some sort of red paint marks on this beam. And there's a thought that this was once, you know, when it was a functioning guild hall. That it looks like 15, doesn't it, with a B, or, an R or, or possibly E or an R, yeah, yeah, yeah easily. But this is thought that maybe this wall was once painted. Oh, I can imagine, and, and it probably had graffiti of the children on it. Mm -hmm. I went to a church at Duxford in Cambridgeshire, mm -hmm. and they actually had a school bench, because it was used as a, because it had two churches in the village, so one church wasn't really used very much and they used it as a school and it was one bench that was still there and it was covered with graffiti going back 400 years it was just amazing I'll show you one oh downstairs. fantastic well thank you very much are oh, you the curator here i'm oh, um, one of the trustees one of the trustees yeah these are they're believed to be witches marks uh-huh witches marks and it's being shown that this is actually Cut out into the no, wood. It's burnt out. Or burnt, burnt out into the wood, yeah. And there's a lot also around here. And people have experimented to see how this was made. You know, was it, have, were they made because someone stuck a candle and the candle just burnt down? Well, no, you don't get that sort of mark. You only get that mark if you. If you're holding you're the holding flame at an angle. It, yeah. And yeah. for 15 minutes. 15 so, minutes it yes. would take to burn that hole. Yeah. Then people have some very strange superstitions, you know, that their ideas of keeping out evil. Well, yes, it's a sort of fight fire with fire. Can you imagine Matthew Hopkins in here, can't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh... But yeah, but, I mean, he, he, if you like, he, in his time, he became a very wealthy man. And because there were so many towns and villages that had people they wanted to get rid of. Sadly, yes, I know, yes. <laughs> and he provided that, that way, yes. that mechanism to doing it. Okay, there's villagers oh, this is, walking, this is through, the, walking yeah. through the guild hall. That's right, that's the big arch down That's the big arch way arch where, the, where, yes. we, where we came through earlier, folks, as we walked in towards the church. Isn't that beautiful? It is. Very it's been a real pleasure actually allowing us up. We're really, really grateful. I hope you folks have enjoyed it, and no doubt, probably, if you get the opportunity to come here, you might be able to get a glimpse in here. And certainly, if they come back here on a Monday, you say people. Uh, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday oh, and Sunday. Monday coffee mornings. Monday coffee Monday mornings. Morning. Come here for a coffee, coffee morning on a Monday. <laughs> but thank you very much. And it's been quite modernised here, isn't it? New toilets. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Was that all paid by English Heritage, or was that as a result? English Heritage, Heritage Lottery Fund. Oh, Heritage Lottery Fund. Lovely people who buy lottery tickets wouldn't help preserve this building. Yeah, and I don't gamble. <laughs> <laughs> Life is too much of a gamble for me. But it's, I'm glad that they do, obviously. Well, thank you very much. And what are your name? I've just got to show you this. So what is your name? I have to... I'm Deb. Deb. Okay, Deb, <laughs> thank you. All oh, right. I'll just show you this Sorry. thing in here. I'm Stephen Bond. I'm a fairy. Look at this. This is just amazing. Let's just stand. Right, I hope you folks can see this. It is absolutely covered in graffiti. Oh, a little windmill. Oh, a little windmill there. So there was another board underneath, obviously, because the rest of the windmill would have been below. Yeah. And then we go through here. 
you guys can see that. And we have a date here, 1776, carved into the wood. We have a 1769. And 1769. Wow. And just take it back one more time very quickly so you can see. I mean, you can stop the, uh, the video at any point so you can examine this in more detail. Wow, this is lovely, isn't it? Can you see that name there? Can you click on past it? Can you see S Sparks? Oh, yeah. Yes. Where are we? Oh, yes, S, S Sparks, Sparks, 1769. Wow. I'll show you somewhere else where he carved his name. He always mm. We went to Ashwell <laughs> Church in North Hertfordshire, just on yes, the Cambridgeshire right. border, yes. and it is absolutely covered in graffiti. And so much graffiti, in fact, it was and graffiti those, over graffiti, and wasn't those it? Were a few days from the Yes, yes. People, oh, that was just stunning. Steeple Bumpstead Church has the same. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, we'll have that? to go there. I know Steeple Bumpstead. It's the way towards Haverhill. Yes. Yeah. And they've, they've like the date, uh, the date, and then God help us, you know, <laughs> which is really sad. It is really sad, sad, actually. Sad, yes. I just put this back. Well, you can imagine that emptiness of all those people that have passed, their yes. families, their loved ones. Yes. And the loneliness of the fact that there is nobody there. Well, villages became deserted, didn't they? Yeah. Well, I'll have to check that one out. Well, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure being here, actually. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Deb, for that. I really do appreciate your help. That's very good. Can I ask you a question? Someone said to me, I know it's not the same guy. There's Charles Dickens buried in the churchyard. No, no. There's a headstone to a Charles Dickens oh, right. somewhere in there, but it's not the Charles, not Charles Dickens. Dickens. No, we can't him. We've got some interesting ones, um, but they're uh, not Charles Dickens. No. Well, no, I mean, the, the person who pointed it out <laughs> yeah. to me knew it wasn't Charles Dickens. Oh, right. A but Charles it, Dickens. It was a Charles Dickens, yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, how strange is that? Right, I'll show you where S. Sparks also carved in S. Box was definitely a graffiti artist. Ooh, Where are we? Yeah. Well, actually, underneath the Guild Hall in the archway that you saw earlier. Let's have a look on this side. No, I can't see it here. Well, it's on the other side. If you go to Felsted's church, yes. 1798, yes. you have the similar thing there. As you walk through the oh, Guild right. Hall, yes. you yes. have lots of graffiti on the walls. But Mr. Sparks also left his mark here somewhere. Yeah. Oh no, I can't see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sparks, Sparks, the secret graffiti artist. I wonder if it's on the lower, on the lower panels. It's AS, yeah, initial. You got FWA. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find it strange? And this is the same thing that I think about this. You know, when we, we find a graffiti and it's two or three hundred years old, we get really excited, don't we? We do, yeah. <coughs> but if it's graffiti that was done in the last two years, we call them vandals. We call them yes, vandals, exactly. don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Very good book on graffiti, med medieval graffiti by a man called Matthew Champion. Really? Yes, very, very good. So you, you're you talking about all second-hand timbers were used in this building. Mm -hmm. So we've got this arch support here, which is yeah. rather plain, oak. And then on this side, which is much earlier, it's really ornate. It's obviously been taken from, a, from another property and it has a date on it, 84. So whether that was 1484 or whatever, we'll never know, will we? That was the village locker. That was the village locker? Yes, it's a loo now. <laughs> it was probably a loo then. <laughs> For drunks. <laughs> it is a higgledy piggledy building using odd materials here and there, but it all comes together, doesn't it, really well. What a lovely building. <laughs> What do we have down here? It's all. <coughs> oh, 
after the leaves. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is the old medieval floor. Oh, it's a medieval floor down there. Down, but, uh, <coughs> um, leading to the... Um, leading from the... What would have been the, the track out there and into the... Uh, what a wonderful the history you have here. You can have it too in, in the graveyard. It's, it's Dickens or something similar to... I don't know that. We, we heard that, didn't we? Did what you one's find that? It? Was it this one? It was this show. Oh, you're talking about Charles Dickens? Yes. Yeah, but know. nobody knows of it. It may be Charles Dickens as opposed oh, to right. Dickens, but <laughs> someone picked up the similarity and told oh, me right. about it. Right. And I thought, while we're here, we'll see if anybody right. knows anything about it. But we, we certainly couldn't find it anywhere, could we? And we looked no, we everywhere. Not, no. mm. But look, thank you very it's much. Quite all right. Yeah, That's we're going to get on to the rest of the village. Bye bye. <laughs> Well, yeah, indeed, so and welcoming. what a very informative lady. And warm, and really, really mm. nice. We'll have to look for uh, Dodie's yes. house on the way out, the yes. Orfress of the 101 Dalmatians. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah. But yes, Finchinfield is a, is a particularly attractive village, to say the very least. So if you get the opportunity, this is where we have been today. Comes under the Diocese of Chelmsford and St John the Baptist Finching Field. I must say that every St John, I realised afterwards that this was St John, every St John church that I've been into yep. had, for me at least, mm -hmm. a massive calming effect and just a warmth and yeah. actually St John is the same saint that I was named after. So, you know, who Well knows? I was named after the ancient saint of travellers. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I'm a traveller, so... Yeah, I'm first of all. <laughs> <laughs> and Poppy was named after Poopy. <laughs> and look at these lovely thatched roof here. Let's have a look at these properties as we go back towards where the car's parked. And it's got what they call clapperboard sides. So you can see that feather, that kind of feather boarding on the side. And then look at this house here. How delightful is this? What a beautiful building. It's called Cabbages or Cabbages. A lovely little lime green cottage here. Lights. And across the road, much more contemporary properties. And we head back towards the car. going offline now but we'll be back again very shortly okay ladies and gentlemen we are now on the other part of finching field we're going to take you for a walk around to look at some of the uh, highs and lows of the village and where we're standing before we go any further this is the old police house and in fact it's still called the police house I've been here a number of times now during the series Lovejoy he had to produce his driving documents at a police station and they chose Finchingfield for the purpose. They apparently were here a few hours. It was a short scene, maybe no more than a couple of minutes, uh, where Lovejoy came in to produce his documents to a police officer. But the interesting thing was this, so I was told, see this slope here, and it's quite a steep slope. Lovejoy, or Ian McShane, had his trailer literally dragged up to here, put onto blocks so it was level. He went into the old police station, done his piece on camera, walked out and stepped straight back into his trailer which was parked here. He certainly didn't fancy walking any long distances. I find it hard to believe that someone would cause <laughs> that level, that level of um, should we say inconvenience in order to shoot such a small and insignificant scene but uh, yeah hopefully you can see a photograph of Ian McShane in what was Finchinfield police station 
at the time the TV series was shot. It's now privately owned, so it's a private house, and it's called Police House. A little bit of history there for you. Did you find that interesting one? I was watching the phone. You were watching the phone, okay. For, uh, for Spain's house. Uh, Spain's Hall. Spain's Hall. Yeah, that's yeah. way outside the village. I think, is that where Jamie Oliver lives? No, I don't think so, no, because it's open to public. It's, uh, is it? I read about, about it when we visited the museum. Oh, okay. Very nice history and the legend of the raven. The raven was this uh, uh, fortune teller from the 17th century, which told the owner of the house that he should keep his vow of silence after telling his wife, accusing his wife of adultery, Jamie. which she didn't. Unless he keeps the vow silence, a tragedy, tragedies will follow. And in fact, tragedies did follow soon because afterwards. Because the vow of silence wasn't kept. So. Well, Poppy's been keeping a vow of silence ever since we left home today. <laughs> right, okay, now we're walking back along the grass verge. It's going to be a bit noisy here today because we do get a lot of motorcyclists here and people with loud sports cars. They don't have to be loud sports cars, but they like to rev the guts out of them. So when we talk about Finching Field, it is a picture postcard village. There's no doubt about it. It's been used on innumerable advertisements in the past. It's like a mini version of Lavenham, I suppose, in a way, as far as, uh, as, far as film work is concerned. And I have no doubt it's probably been used in other productions. And as I mentioned earlier, Lovejoy was one of those that, which was featured here. Now it's very popular with tourists. You get a lot of bikers here. A lot of car people as well. Parking here is an absolute nightmare. But this is the uh, the chocolate box of Village Green of Finching Field, which you can see here. Going around. What do you think of Finching Field? It's very loud. <laughs> very loud. <laughs> Unnecessarily loud. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's lovely. It's very nice. Mm. Look at the view on the it's one of those places that still has a village pond, has a bridge, it has a windmill, and until some years ago, a police station too, but that's gone. There's virtually no shops here, of course. It's just mostly tea rooms. I don't think anybody's gonna... Strangely, most of them always owned by someone called Jemima or something similar. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very much a tourist spot now. There's no industry here to speak of. Here's the, uh, the First World War, Second World War Memorial. All those brave people who died in vain, because all wars are in vain. But look at the view from here. If you can see that looking up the hill towards the church. And we're across the road. The pub here, which is the Fox. This was featured in Lovejoy, I believe. We have an antique shop next door. We just have a wander up here. It's a lovely old timber framed house here. And you can see it's jetted in part so it gives you some idea of its ancestry and age and uh, as you can see there's lots of motorcycles here lots and lots and lots and lots of motorcycles here i don't think noise pollution is an issue here is it is if you're looking for a quiet village this isn't the place to this come to it. no <laughs> avoid this place if you want somewhere quiet it is far too noisy. Great Barfield is probably better in that regard. Okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to cross the bridge past the, uh, the village pond.
I'm just going to walk over here. You stay there, honey. This is the village pond with lots of fish in it. They look like rod, actually. And we need to come over across this side. We have the Greedy Duck Cafe. <laughs> the Greedy Duck and the Wonky Wheel. <laughs> so here we have the Wonky Wheel. And here we have the Greedy Duck. <laughs> Take your choice. And next door we have the Funeral Directors. Huh? And flies. <laughs> the Funeral Directors, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go, they're shutting. Do you want to go and see the, um, yeah. the windmill and then we can come back? Poppy refuses to go anywhere. Yeah. I'm actually going to, if you stay here honey, I'm going to cross over, particularly the better for you. So, standing from here, we have a really attractive row of period properties here. And then swinging the camera around very slowly. Mostly restaurants next door to each other. And in the middle, the, un the undertakers, the funeral directors. And ahead of us is a beautiful windmill. It's basically a wooden structure which pivots on a, on a brick base. Town mills, which are more frequent, or the smog is actually on the top of the tower which pivots around. This is very attractive here. There she is. The, the two important girls in my life. <laughs> okay, we're now coming up to hopefully a passageway which will take us through to see the bar, sorry, the Finching Field windmill. I think there's one at Barfield too. Another timber frame thatch roofs house, cottage. And here too, but a tiled roof. This is probably one of the best views that you can get of the actual windmill from here. But we need to get a bit closer. As you can see, it's very much uh, what one might describe as a chocolate box village. Everywhere seems to have a fat roof. Seems to be the order of the day and it's very attractive I hasten to add this is the footpath which is largely overgrown which will take us to the windmill and you can see the windmill from here oh can you smell that cow bait yeah. oh Cowbane, is it? I think I think it's called. Oh, it's, it smells absolutely disgusting. Right here we are. Ah, oh, I'm out of breath now. I'm so hot. This is the windmill. Unfortunately, you can't get any closer than that. I don't notice they, whether they have any open days, but I understand that. Uh, The mill is open to the public on the afternoons of the third Sunday of each month from April to September from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, this is their information board. Doesn't really tell you much of the history though. But uh, that's very attractive and uh, it's been well preserved. What do you think? I think it is very pretty. I, I don't know where this leads to, but it, it can't be good, can it? 
<laughs> Shall I have a quick look? You can. You wait here, I'll be straight back. No, just... I think it's an alleyway which takes us around the back. Hopefully. And here we are. Oh, what a lovely view. And this beautiful cottage. What a lovely house. <laughs> such a mad mad crowd in the in the bottom in that little valley and it's so it looks like a valley doesn't it it's, yeah it's so tranquil isn't it okay and this takes us back out again and voila we are back on the other side of the road facing all the cottages so yeah. we'll walk past those on the way back so this is really part of your round robbing and finching field Most old ancient villages were always built by the site of a source of water. So they all tended to be rather low in the valley where the streams or the rivers flowed. And we've got these little cottages here. And you have this wonderful panoramic view of the village green at Finching Field. I'm going to give them away free pot here, old pots. <laughs> I jest. Anyway, we're back on the, the hill that leads up to the, uh, the church. I am going to risk life and limb and cross the road. It's one of those few moments where it's actually quiet here. And up ahead there you can see the church tower just poking above the top with the flag of England and the guild hall itself. And here comes Wanner and Poppy. I don't know why, but I think that's not. Oh, yeah, it is to me, yeah. yeah. You better cross over. We don't often get it this quiet. Okay, now we need to go down here. So we're basically circumnavigating the, the entire village. And for those of you who are not sure of the spelling of the village, here is its name. There you go. And now we're coming past the, the village pond, which has got rather a lot of algae growing on it. It does, yeah. The village duck pond. I should imagine a camper to this harbour. It's really beautiful here, isn't it? So this all adds to the imagery that people might have of Finching Field. And right over the background you can still see the, the windmill. Any yeah, thoughts? We we did some We've moved around a bit. We have moved around a lot, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I and thoroughly you enjoyed it. Ducks because it's so hot, you just want to jump in the water. I think <laughs> we should go somewhere and retreat into the countryside yes. and find some isolated pub. Yes, I think so too. And retire for a, for a, for a <laughs> while, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. I think Poppy wants to. Right, we need to go back this way, back to the car. Past the ducks, and there are many here. Oh look, lots of chicks here, if anyone can see that. There's four chicks and mum and dad. It's good to see that, they look after their families, don't they? I think they're much better than humans actually, when it comes to looking after them. Look at that duckling, I oh, know. He just died, bless him. Only beautiful creatures. Oh, oh. 
Yeah, yeah, and that was Dad. Oh, that was yeah, Dad. Was yeah, Dad was not very happy. Yeah, you can see them. And the one of the chicks has actually gone off in the distance. Okay, we we'll leave the we we'll leave the ducks and chicks to their uh, machinations. As with every village, you have a parish notice board. Someone's deemed to block the road. Hope we can get in, into our car. Anyway, we're now going to go off and find Dodie's house. See if we can log that onto camera. Hope you've enjoyed the walk around us so far. But uh, after that, we're going for a drink somewhere. Come on, you two. <laughs> okay, we have now found the house. <laughs> it seems it seems miles from the village, yeah, but we found it, and we parked in in front of someone's house, and they very kindly allowed us to to be there. So I'm going to cross over, so we can get a better view. Um, and this is the house that, in which the authoress or the author of 101 Dalmatians lived in, and this is Dodie's place. It's a beautiful house, it really is stunning. Here we are. This is a very, very attractive place to be. What a great place if you're an author. Look at this house. Okay, this is the home of Dodie Smith, who wrote 101 Dalmatians. Yeah. Can you see the pigeon cots things? Yes. The, those holes there yes. for, for pigeons? Although they they're... were there, even when she was here. Yeah? I've seen a photo, yes. And this is her, this is her home. So there is an honour there, folks. What a beautiful house to live in. This is like an old, uh, it's probably uh, an old coach house or something to the left. What do you think? I think it's beautiful, yeah, and uh, it's very well kept. And it was worth the effort of coming out worth, here. Yeah. yeah. It was worth the effort. Lovely. And there is, obviously we can't go in, it's a private house, but you can see it from the video here. And we'll walk back as far as we can. There's another little house in the back. Oh yeah, there's a little, there's a garage, isn't it? Yeah, it's a garage and the, the windows are painted in, yeah. The front just raw in the background is going to be Stansted Airport because we're not a million miles away from Thaxted. I'm going to walk on the grass. And this is it. This is it from me here today with one that we visited Finchingfield. We didn't find Charles Dickens' home. No. Uh, grave rather. Grave. Yeah. Although we know it's not the author, no, Charles funny. Dickens, but we did find some interesting things. We met a lovely person at the museum, at the Guild Hall, and she was kind enough to really show us around the building. I was quite honoured, and Wanda uh, loved that too. We've had a lovely wander around the village, we've seen the ducks, and we've looked yeah, at the windmill, windmill and the, the most imp Oh, and the witches, the witches, witches sticks. Yeah, sticks and tails. Inside and the museum. But the icing on the cake was the church wasn't yes, it definitely. st john the baptist Absolutely. so anyway if you get the opportunity to get in the car and drive over here by all means have a look at finchingfield better to come during the week 